Hi, and welcome to the Vet Dental Show. I'm Brett Beckman. I'm a board certified veterinary dentist. And we bring this show to you every Wednesday, the general practitioner and the technician to help you and your dentistry team become even better at veterinary dentistry. And today we are so pleased and honored to have Trudy Bowden. Part one of the podcast with Dr. Trudy Bowden was amazing. If you have not listened to that, go back and listen to the previous episode. Now we will resume with episode two, two with Dr. Trudy Bow. Back up a little bit because this becomes important to the structure of practices that are not quite where you are yet, but are getting there. <clears throat> and one of the things that I remember that, that I pulled out several years ago from with your progression mm -hmm. was the fact that with any dentistry consultation within the practice, they would call you in as the Correct. person that did dentistry. And that I think that that is a huge thing for practices in general, especially multi doctor practices to have one person, the person who's most talented person that's got the most passion <clears throat> to be that go-to person that literally comes in as the local specialist, uh, not spe taking specialists out of context, obviously, right. but you are, you're the in-house person. You're the go-to person for dentistry who has the, the most knowledge. I would rather you talk to, to Dr. Bowden uh, about this because she can put a different twist on it and give you more information sure. than I can. And that's something that I would, I would strongly suggest that our listeners take to heart. And certainly not all of our listeners are the decision maker in the practice, but if you're that, if you're that person, if you're the, the most talented in dentistry and have the most passion for dentistry in your practice, you probably should be the only one doing dentistry in that practice. Those Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. I agree. And I, and I think um, that helps for the staff too, you know, to say, um, well, I heard Dr. Smith recommend a, a dental cleaning and assessment for your patient. Let's schedule a consult with Dr. Bowden or whoever that person is. We did free um, 30 minute dental consults with me the first year that we started this um, expansion. And that sort of upfront um, commitment was a real sign to the owners that we did have that passion for it. You know, we believe in this so much that we are going to take 30 minutes out of our day free of charge, whether you schedule or not, um, to talk about dentistry and why it's important. And, you know, what we're learning with the um, addition of this equipment to our to our practice. So um, that that became the cornerstone for our success was those free consults. And uh, I guess that's why I still like talking to clients. That, that's that's great. Uh, and I'd like to expound on that a little bit just so people know how to how to get that started if they want to do something like that. Was that a marketing piece that you sent out to your existing clients? Was it just people who came in for annual exams? How did you, how did you get the word out to your clients that you were doing that? It was mostly um, in-house. So if my colleague um, had a patient who she thought would benefit from dentistry, um, she would give some basic information uh, and then recommend scheduling a free consult with me. If I wasn't tied up, I would come in uh, at the same time. But I found it was more productive to actually have an allotted amount of time dedicated to that person. And when we got phone calls asking for quotes, what will it cost for us to get my cat's teeth cleaned? Uh, we had the front desk staff had um, very short, you know, script of, you know, what are you looking for? We'd love for you to schedule a consult with Dr. Bowden. She's, you know, doing dentistry in our practice. And, you know, we'd love for you to come have a tour. And, and we gained a lot of clients that way. You know, they were price shopping, uh, but uh, they came in, they had their consult. And we had about an 80% success rate, which is sort of opposite 
opposite of, of what we tend to tend to expect um, or what I led uh, to be what I had experienced before we started this journey. Um, and I think the passion was the difference, just the commitment to and, and the confidence. You know, you, you can't have the, the passion without the confidence uh, or experience to, to lean on. And um, yeah, so I think that was crucial. Excellent. And one more question on that on that topic. So that 80 percent that included the people who were just calling for price shopping. You know, I probably don't have that data. That was definitely our in-house. Uh, you know, if they scheduled a free consult with me, we had about an 80 percent scheduling rate. That was not our success rate across the board uh, because, um, you know, I don't know if I ever ran those numbers, you know, how many declined to schedule a consult. Um, but we went from doing um, something like, we were only doing one a week um, and we increased that only by one number. We, we were doing 50 a year. We started doing 100 a year, but the, the revenue was uh, exponentially greater um, than that because of all of the pathology we found and the need for, you know, uh, advanced surgical extractions. Um, so um, I think it would be hard for me to get you a concrete number. Um, I remember oh, from your course. seminar that, you know, we need to expect that 80% of the people are going to say no and not be discouraged by that. Um, and that shift in perspective, just going in, you know, saying, yeah, she's probably going to say no, but I'm going to talk about it. I believe in it. And, um, you know, not to let that discourage you. That's great. And that's certainly counter to everything that I've been exposed to. So I, I love that. And that's certainly encouraging to all the practices out there, especially if you've been exposed to my little spiel on that, which, which is, uh, that's pleasing to hear. I'm so glad to hear that. That's, that's amazing. Well, we, we told the staff, you know, 80% of the people are going to say no, or they're going to balk at the price um, because this is a complete um, restructuring of everything that they've come to know about dentistry. You know, a, a $250 cleaning is not uh, a full, um, full procedure. And so that shift probably took about five years to where clients were uh, aware of what those differences were um, between just the scale and polish versus, you know, a full assessment. Um, but um, letting the staff know not to get discouraged. We're going to talk about this regardless of who says yes or no, because this is right and we believe in it. And this is, you know, our passion. So. Excellent. That's an excellent takeaway for everybody. Are there, is there, or are there other things like that, that you could pass on as little pearls to people who are in, in general practice and they are doing dentistry at a, at a pretty, pretty good level and mm -hmm. could benefit from that could be easy, easily instituted? I think having, you know, some of the support staff that may not routinely be involved in procedures, uh, we would routinely have them come back and look at the before and after photos or actually look at the patient on the table, compare it to the radiographs. Um, and, and that was a real game changer for them too. Uh, they had discomfort, you know, discussing the difference uh, in price on estimates. But then I think once they saw the real value of the service, they were much more likely to um, be comfortable going over, um, you know, estimates for one or two hours of surgery. Um, so that helped. And um, I think that was probably the biggest thing, you know, just the client education piece and making sure everyone on the team, you know, understood and, and had the same belief. And the proof is in the pudding. <laughs> These dogs would come back, you know, for their rechecks and they're completely different dogs. Uh, old, slow, you know, geriatric dogs are acting like puppies. And um, so the, those were happy success stories as well. 
you know, owners considering euthanasia and we do full mouth extractions and give this animal another, you know, two, three years of quality life. And so it's a self-rewarding uh, kind of uh, endeavor. That's the big thing that keeps us, keeps us all going, I think, is seeing that right? patient come back and be so, so different and the owners being so happy that they have some extra time and quality time at that with, with their patients. Mm -hmm. and now, I, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> now I'm, I'm just, just looking forward. And, and now by you being in the position where you can help pass along some of those techniques to other practitioners so that they can start on that journey that you started on and eventually get to the point, maybe not quite the, the, the heights that you've reached, but get to a point where, they're doing dentistry at a very high quality level and they're providing mm -hmm. service. So it's a way to, to, uh, uh, what, what is the term, uh, pass it forward or give it forward? Pay it forward. Right. Pay exactly. It forward. It forward. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, a substantial uh, portion of our caseload here at the dental clinic is surgical extractions. I don't do uh, restorations. I don't do root canals. I don't do endo. Um, I do some um, jaw fracture work. Um, I do some um, cancer surgeries, but the bulk of what we do is surgical extractions. And um, that's why we're trying to train up uh, the, the local um, providers, because a lot of that could be done at the general practice level with the right foundation and training. Exactly. Um, Excellent point. And we're, we're the same exact way at the specialty level. We're probably 80% of our uh, cases are, are surgical extractions. Okay. So, um, yeah, yeah, we have more work than we can handle. Uh, <laughs> uh, they thought bringing me on was going to slow things down. And, and unfortunately, the if you build it, they will come as, you know, the, the caseload has continued to skyrocket. So <laughs> let's get more people in the program. We, we need help. Would you say that, that that is likely because of that same concept of going in the room and being thorough with an explanation to the owner? Whereas maybe I do. That piece yeah, we, with the exception of emergencies or um, uh, follow up care, um, we do um, 45 minute to one hour consults on all of our cases. Um, and so we, we have that education opportunity. Um, a lot of owners have concerns about advanced anesthesia. We get a lot of uh, geriatrics with a lot of comorbidities. Um, so we have, you know, that hour to, to go through all of that before we present them with any type of a treatment plan. Um, and then um, that underscores the value, <clears throat> you know, of what they're getting uh, when they schedule that appointment. Uh, and we're still scheduling three months out between the both of us. So yeah, there's, there's uh, <laughs> days we can't find room for those urgent cases. It's challenging. Yeah, I bet it is, but that's, that's great. I, it, it's just such a great case in point of what can be done in general practice and being able to provide that kind of value to your patients and your, your clients is totally doable again with challenges Obviously, as the, the progression goes from, you know, the basics and knowing the basics and getting frustrated and breaking root tips and <laughs> just Every day. A encouragement for everybody out there. We still break root tips and I've been Every doing day. for a long time. So yeah. don't uh, don't let that don't let that get in your way. Don't let that frustrate you that that uh, in quotation marks. Failure is not actually a failure. It's just the reason to get better. There are many days that I'm, you know, on my third re retrieval and I'm just like, I appreciate the opportunity to learn. I appreciate <laughs> trying to uh, repeat that mantra so that, you know, I'm learning here. It's frustrating, but I'm learning. Excellent. <laughs> well, that's an excellent, excellent takeaway <clears throat> for, uh, for this interview and uh, just amazing to have you here. And I'm sure the people that are listening are getting a ton out of this. I would love to maybe have you back at some point. Yes. Uh, I, I could have been more polished uh, with the, the timeline, all of that, but uh, this is, 
this is the real me. So <laughs> that's what you get. Awesome. Awesome, Trudy. Well, thank you so much. And if, um, if there's anything that uh, you can provide to the audience about how, if any pet parents are listening, how they can find your practice and, and find you uh, personally to take care of their pet, their pets or their, their. Uh, sure. Uh, it's the veterinary dental clinic of North Carolina and we're in Durham. Excellent. Well, thanks again, Trudy. I sure appreciate it. Thanks, right, Beth. Brett. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. I trust you enjoyed that episode. We enjoyed providing it. If you would, do us a big favor and go to our iTunes page, post a rating and review, and take a picture of that with your cell phone, and then post it on our Facebook page, and we'll send you the Instrument Use Essentials course. If you also look below... There is a link to two live trainings that we do. And one is on radiographic interpretation. The other is on killer tips for quicker extractions. If you have not been to those, register for the one that's coming up next. And the link will be in the show notes on the website, The Vet Dental Show. And we'll get you in and get you a 30-minute, 40-minute overview of those topics that are really insightful and all take home. And then we'll also give you an opportunity to get a great deal and some bonuses on those two courses that are online courses that span uh, five hours and seven hours. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Hopefully you'll help us out uh, with the post on our Facebook group. And then as a little extra bonus for you, You've got that link down there. You can register if you haven't been to either one of those and enjoy all of that content uh, that we're going to give you on those two topics. So take care. We'll see you next week.